Next up, we want to look at debt management ratios. There are three debt management ratios that we want to look at here. First, total debt to total assets. Next, our times interest earned. And then lastly, our cash coverage ratio. Let's start with the total debt to total assets. Just looks at, as the name implies, our liabilities, which are our debts, divided by our assets. So we need from the balance sheet, we need our total liabilities and total assets. We've got our total liabilities here at 13,043 and our total liabilities at 29,963. Now the idea of the total debt to total assets ratio is the more debt we have relative to our assets, the more risk we've got. There's not a magic number that we're looking for here, and higher is not necessarily bad. All it's saying is that the higher this gets, the more risk we have. And if it gets too high, if that total debt to total assets starts getting way too high, it means that any downturn is going to cause a collapse. One of the big problems that a lot of the financial institutions had in the 2007 and 2008 financial crisis is that their total debt to total assets ratio was well into the 90% range so that their assets dropped a little bit and it completely wiped out the company. So total debt to total assets is a measurement of how much risk we have. Having that number get positive, a little bit of total debt, is actually good for companies in a lot of cases but too much debt, if this number gets too high, can be a big problem. In Coca-Cola's case, our total debt to total assets ratio was our liabilities. Again, we said the liabilities, 13,043, and the assets, 29,963. And that gives us a total debt to total assets ratio of 43.5% are rounded off to 0.44. Next up we have our times interest earned looks at how easily the company can make its interest payments. We take our earnings before interest and taxes divided by interest. The idea is this is money that's available for interest payments and we divide that by the interest expense. The higher this number is, the more easily we can meet our interest payments. Ideally, we would like to see this be in at least the high single digits or at least middle single digits, so five or higher. If it starts to get too low, two or three, we're still able to meet our interest payments, but any downturn in our earnings or profitability could lead us into a bankruptcy situation. So the higher this number is, the more cushion we have, the more comfortable we are at paying off our interest obligations. For Coca-Cola, we said the earnings before interest and taxes were 6,798 in 2006 and their interest expense during that same year was 220. So now the times interest earned is just that 6,798 in EBIT divided by the 220 in interest expense. Go through the calculations on our calculator, and we get a times interest earned of 30.90. Which tells us Coca-Cola is very comfortable making their interest payments, and there's no concern about their ability to meet their ongoing obligations from interest expense associated with the debt financing that they're using. The cash coverage ratio is nice because it adds in our depreciation while depreciation lowers our earnings before interest and taxes on an accounting basis, 
it has no impact on our cash flows. We're not really spending anything. So technically that depreciation is available to make our interest payments. So when we're looking on a cash basis, this is maybe a little bit better measure of our ability to meet our interest obligations than the times interest earned ratio. For the cash coverage ratio, again, we need our earnings before interest and taxes and our interest. And now we also need depreciation. Remember that was available on the statement of cash flows. Quite often we won't see that broken down on the income statement, but it is available on the statement of cash flows. So our earnings before interest and taxes, 6,798. Add back in our depreciation, which was 938. Divide by our interest, which was 220. Go to our calculator. Got the 6798 plus the 938 in depreciation. And now we want to divide that by the 220 in interest expense. And we get a cash coverage ratio of 35.16. Again, this is a very high number, which indicates that Coca-Cola is very comfortable meeting their ongoing interest obligations. The cash coverage ratio should always be equal to or greater than the times interest earned because our depreciation should never be negative so that numerator the EBIT plus depreciation should be larger than the numerator just EBIT and the times interest earned ratio.